Well, the Westpac Melbourne Institute Index of Consumer Sentiment tumbled by 6.9% in November, down to a level of 78. Now that's actually lower than the low point in the global financial crisis of 79. Uh, and you have to go all the way back to the deep recession of the early 1990s to get consistently lower reads than this particular level. There was one month, April 2020, during the COVID pandemic when it was lower. But the, the picture is pretty clear that uh, we are really talking now about very, very weak consumer sentiment. So what's driving this particular development? I think inflation is still the number one issue. Uh, we saw during the, the, uh, during the month that uh, inflation in the September quarter was reported as 7.3%, up from 6.1% in the June quarter. And of course, in the budget presentation, uh, the Treasurer pointed out that electricity prices are forecast to rise by 56% over the next two years. I think they were very important factors. Another factor actually was the budget itself. Uh, we ask a question every year about whether the budget is expected to worsen or improve your finances. Uh, and 35% said it would worsen. That's the highest proportion that we've seen since the horror budget of 2014, when it was a whopping 56%. Uh, compared to the long run average, uh, the 35% is well above the 30% long run average. And of course, inflation is that key theme. Again, uh, there was laudable restraint in the budget, given the concerns about uh, stoking inflation. But of course, that meant that uh, generally, given the 56% uh, news about the, uh, about the expected rise in electricity prices, the general uh, response was very, very low key indeed. We also saw the Reserve Bank raise interest rates again by 25 basis points. Now that result was widely expected, uh, but I think that the fact that the governor pointed out that more rate increases are, are likely to happen uh, was the thing that unnerved consumers. So before the announcement, relative to after the announcement, sentiment fell by another 9%. Um, the, the another factor that was quite important was we asked a question about uh, spending intentions for Christmas. And 40% of respondents said they plan to spend less. That's a record for, the, for that particular question that we've been doing since 2009. So it's very consistent with a lot of these, with, this other, with these other signals. We're also disturbed by the fact that the outlook for the labour market deteriorated by another 5.6%. So over the last two months, that outlook has deteriorated by 17.8%. That is, that is a still, the outlook is still well above the long run average. So there's still considerable confidence in the labour market but it has taken the, the last two readings have indicated the edge is coming off. And so they're consistent with the idea that the labour market might be peaking. And then of course, with regard to the housing market, the outlook for house price expectations tumbled another 8% down to a level of 91. That is still above the low point that we saw in 2018, 19, but certainly the momentum is consistent with ongoing pessimism about the outlook for house prices. So what does this all mean for policy? Well, the Reserve Bank is still very much challenged by the inflation outlook. They're forecasting that the inflation rate will reach 8% by the end of this year and only get down to 4.7% in 2023. That suggests that they need to maintain the pressure on interest rates. So we're likely to see another rate hike in February, 25 basis points, another one in March, and we think another one in May. Because despite the fact that we've seen this incredibly pessimistic uh, attitude in consumer sentiment, that's been going now since basically the first rate hike back in May. So in the September quarter, when the, when the sentiment index was in the low 80s, admittedly above where we are now at 78, but still not that far above, uh, we're expecting to see reasonable spending growth uh, in the September quarter. And the reason, of course, is that this cycle is quite different to previous cycles due to the aftermath of COVID. So we've got extreme labour shortages, so the unemployment rate is near record lows. We have accumulated savings on the household balance sheets up to $260 billion. 
the savings rate is still high. So as that comes down, it frees up more money for spending. And of course, particularly in the eastern states, we're seeing the reopening effect still coming through. So spending is going to remain relatively strong compared to where we're seeing in terms of this, uh, this sentiment story. But I think as those factors start to fade, and as we go into 2023, we're going to see a substantial slowdown. We're expecting economic growth in 2023 of 1%. Last week, the Reserve Bank lowered their forecast from 1.8% to 1.4%. And all of that was due to a substantial slowdown in the forecast for household spending. We have household spending only running at 1.2% next year. So it's going to be a very, very difficult year for policy and a difficult year for the economy. With the economy slowing, but inflation still holding up. In fact, the Reserve Bank doesn't expect that inflation will get down between that 2 and 3% range, even in 2024, where they're expecting 3.2%. The worry that I have around that scenario is that our forecast at the moment is that the Reserve Bank will be able to cut rates in 2024 to provide some relief in the face of what we expect to be a stagnating economy in the second half of 23 and into 24. But if inflation holds up too high, then that option won't be available. So that's why we need to get the inflation problem under control now, which of course will mean higher rates over the course of the next six months. Thanks very much.